Press. Modern War Number 47. Seven Days to the Rhine Objective Nuremberg. Objective Nuremberg is a two-player alternative history war game, and what you get with this game are one 22 by 34 inch map and one sheet of counters. High Flying Dice Games and Operation Faustian, the battle for Primo Sole Bridge, July 12th to 15th, 1943. Operation Faustian was an airborne force operation undertaken during the Allied invasion of Sicily in July 1943. And what you get with this game is one 8.5 by 11 inch map, 80 unmounted double sided counters, a player aid card, and one rule book. Black Shirts, Red Blood, the Battle of Guadalajara. March 8th to 23rd, 1937. The largest battle of the Spanish Civil War to date was about to be waged. And what you get with this game is two 11 by 17 inch maps, 77 unmounted double sided counters, a play raid sheet, a rule book, and a game designed by Paul Rohrball. One Small Step Games, War and Peace, a game designed by Mark McLaughlin. This is a classic game on Napoleonic Conquest. And what you got with this game is one large mounted map board in two 22 by 34 inch sections, four mounted and die cut full color counter sheets, a rule book, a scenario book, a grand campaign book, an operational methods book, a three panel chart and table folder, one force pool display, two leader displays, dice, and a box and a lid. Worthington Publishing and Struggle for Europe, 1939 to 1945. This is a deck destruction game allowing two players to refight World War II in Europe from 1939 to 1945. This is playable in one to two hours. This is a game designed by Grant and Mike Wiley. And what you get with this game is a large mounted game board, four punched counter sheets, access card deck with 60 plus cards, an allied card deck with 80 plus cards. That's why they won the war. They had 20 more cards. Plus, War Along the Great Lakes, Volume 3 in Worthington's War of 1812 Deluxe Game, playable by one to two players in under two hours. And what you get with this game is this, and that, this, and that. The page that I referenced this information from there was no information, so... and repost in Spain, 1085 to 1086. Now, what a weird but fascinating title. And who can that come from but only Volko Ronke. Almoravid, Volume 2 in Volko Ronke's Levy and Campaign series. And what you get with this game is one 22 by 25 and a half inch mounted map. Wooden pieces, playing cards, three full color counter sheets, 17 cardboard lord and battle maps. One lord sticker sheet. Ah, that means a lot of blocks, people. Four player eight sheets, two screens, rule booklet, background booklet, six sided die. This is a one to two player game. The time is 40 days per turn. Units are 100 to 200 horse or two to 400 foot. Point to point map, 400 miles across. This complexity is medium. Solitaire suitability is high. Twilight Struggle, Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa. This is a game designed by Jason Matthews. 
Red Sea Conflict in the Horn of Africa is a two-player standalone card-driven game that builds on the award-winning Twilight Struggle. What you got with this game is one 11 by 17 inch mounted map, 48 new Twilight Struggle cards, half counter sheet, 50 card sleeves, rule booklets and two six-sided die. Complexity is low and solitaire suitability is low. Playing time, 35 minutes for the base game. Wing Leader Legends 1937 to 1945 is the fourth expansion for GMT's Wing Leader system. What you get with this game is one campaign rules and scenario book, one what ADC do I use booklet, a counter sheet, a sheet of aircraft data cards, a combined sheet of aircraft data cards and counters, one campaign map and two campaign order of battle cards. The game is medium in complexity, solitaire suitability is medium, and game designer is Lee Bramicum Wood. Tiny Battle Publishing and Steamroller. This is a second edition of a highly playable, tense operational look at 1914's pivotal Tannenberg campaign. This is a game designed and developed by the Dream Team, designer Herman Lutman and developer Fred Mansell. And what you get with this is one game map, one sheet of colorful die-cut game pieces, charts and rules, 12 initiative and 24 combat cards, a box, and no dice needed. Complexity is 5 out of 10. Takes a couple of hours to play. Multi-man publishing and advanced squad leader starter kit expansion pack number 2. Marco Omni Gamer reviews Struggle for Europe 1939-1945, a game designed by Grant and Mike Wiley, published by Worthington Publishing. Omni Gamer also reviews the Confederate Rebellion, the American Civil War. This is a solo game designed by David Kershaw and Steve Kling, published by White Dog Games. Omni also reviews Solitaire Caesar by White Dog Games, designed by David Kershaw. Awakening the Bear, 3rd edition, available now. Stains of Steel, 3rd edition, available now. Also reviewing The Longest Trench, designed by Arno Massian and Frederick Moyerson, published by Udo Greb Game Design. Rob Orn of Rob's Tabletop World, in his segment War and Pieces, in which I co-host, was live on BGG TV, discussing war games and DVG. And talking about DVG, use this code, and you get 25% off. I'm telling you. He's good for it. You want to know what's happening on the big board? I'll tell you what's happening on the big board. Kevin, big man of the big board, is talking tactical with Heroes of the NAM. Lock and Load's tactical system, digital. Also, he has a live chat with Tom Russell of Hollenspieler. And he goes deep in designer deep dive number seven, with Brotherhood of Unity designer Tomislav Cipicic. I hope I said his name right. And the big man was live playing a game of Sniper Interactive. He refereed, you command. Sniper is an old SPI game designed by Jim Dunnigan and the artist is Roger B. McGowan with Redmond A. Simonson. And as the big man reminisces about days gone past, He's playing the TCS system. Look, he's got me saying it now. The Tactical Combat Series, a Frozen Hell game by Dean Essig and Alan Wambold, published by The Gamers.
Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of War Game Review Institutions. First game we're reviewing on our website this week is Ram Speed. It's from Metagaming. It's essentially a tri-rain combat game. Does, uh, the sides don't represent any particular nations. It's kind of a blue versus red game, but I love it. And I also ported it to a miniatures game, and so I've been playing it with miniatures and having a lot of fun. First game we're doing a first look at is a big game. It's War in the Pacific from Decision Games. This game has close to 9,000 counters, 30-some uh, maps, uh, one rule book after another, chart books and stuff. It's the biggest game I've ever owned. I'm gonna probably get, gonna end up reselling this. I just don't have time to play this or anywhere to set it up. Uh, uh, right now, but when I retire in 20 or 30 years, uh, then I'll probably pick up a copy again and actually try it when I have the time. Next game we're doing a first look at is Ben Hurt from Cheap Ass Games. This is essentially a low footprint chariot racing game that requires four to eight players and there's gambling in it also. It looks kind of interesting. And the last game we're doing a first look at is Titan from Athlon Hill. It's basically a fantasy combat game. It seems kind of weird, though. Uh, there's some of the hexes. When you first enter the hexes, it has, like, street signs which say which direction you have to go. And the other unique thing about this is when your legion uh, moves to the same location as an opposing legion, then you do the combat on a separate uh, terrain board, and there's a different battle board for each type of terrain. And the last thing we're doing on our YouTube channel is the games I've been playing during isolation. I just list out all the games I've been keeping myself occupied with since we're not allowed to leave our homes right now, really, other than to go to the grocery store or the pharmacy or something. But thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Stay safe. And Cody of the Discriminating Gamer reviews Freeman's Farm 1777, a game by Worthington Publishing, and also has two videos out. The first one being a live playthrough of playing the Americans on that side, and another video of him playing the British of that game, I mean, not side. I can make mistakes. I'm not perfect, you know. Harold Buchanan was live on my sister show called No Enemies Here in Conversation where we discuss Harold Buchanan's games and some investment stuff and good old conversation. And the gentlemen of the Player's Aid are back at it strong with an initial review of Nevsky, a game designed by Volko Runke, published by GMT. Also unboxing Target for tonight from Legion War Games. They are unboxing Normandy, the beginning of the end. Ostkrieg, from Compass Game, designed by Gregory M. Smith and Mitchell S. Ledford. Tim of Hairbrain Games has an interesting video out called Top 10 Favorite Video Channels for Board Games. Play a game. Sure. What kind of a game you want to play? Let's choose something wicked where there's planes, man, and you gotta attack and the planes spawn, man. Let's do that, man. I got the best game for that. Red Men's World War III, 1959. The Ruskies come over and you blow them away. But that's a freaking solo game. So, get out of here. Don't worry, you're not alone in this. During this, these precarious days, everybody's home, including the wife. I mean, she wants you to wash this, wash that, fix that, fix that. <laughs> and all you want to do is just be alone. Well, when you play solo, you are alone. So, think solo. And if you think solo, Think Red Menace, World War II, in 1959. Battlespace Games, designed by 
Brent Ward. Soul games are not only for Saturday mornings. Hang in there, buddy. And AJ Toynbee of Hexes and Soldiers rides a bike in downtown New Orleans. And I think you should check this out because it gives you something of a incredible, eerie feeling like the last man on earth type thing. Check it out. Eerie. And the chief of bonding with board games is live with Judd Vance of Hand Tag Light. And here they discuss their top five card assisted board games. And Gempe of Gempe's Gamer has a couple of videos out, obviously. One is Call of Heroes Storms of Steel Campaign 3 Part 1 and has Gimpy's Gal Guesses Undaunted Normandy published by Osprey Games developed by, I mean, designed by David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin. He also does lock and load tactical digital boot camps. He does an intro, a menu overview, basic unit controls, and basic unit controls continued. That's two videos. And the OG, the original Grognar, takes a look at lock and load tactical digital pre release. Mo of Mo's Game Table. Lock and load tactical digital. Mo does a preview. Check it out, it's all about lock and load this week. Mo is taking a look at the Jaws of Victory from New England Simulations and also Whiskey Charlie Episode 6, of which Gimpy and myself are co-hosts, where we have Luke Hughes of Burden of Command. And Wayne Hansen in his recon segment takes a look at the first Jihad, The Rise of Islam, 632 to 750. This is a state of siege game. It's a solitaire game published by White Dog Games, designed by R. Ben Madsen and Wes Ernie. And Tad of the Itinerant Hobbyist has a couple of videos out on Becca's commands. Well, I really don't know what they are, but I think they're miniatures. Il Professore Riccardo Massini has one game over three videos. The game is Castle Eater by David Thompson, published by DVG, and it's the introduction on the table and the conclusion. Ardwolf of Ardwolf Slayer is unboxing Smolensk. Barbarossa Derailed. This is an operational combat series game published by MMP. Also learning the game, a victory game called the Civil War, designed by Eric Lee Smith. Unboxing Columbia Games, Harn, Infinia Regional Module, and he's pitting his mind against another Grognard mind. He's playing the Operational Combat Series Tunisia 2 against Big Man Kevin CEO live. And Rough Swordsman Wargamer Continues his Nations at War playthrough, White Star Rising, published by Lock and Load Publishing, and starts a or unboxes Warfighter, the tactical special forces game from DVG, modern that is, and Major Tom Solo battles it out with Kevin Verson. While maintaining social distance, they play Down in Flames, Locked On. And the war game reviewer in the wonderful language of Spanish checks out Phantom Leader, a game published by DVG, designed by Dan Burson. Bare Bones Wargaming. The Confederates unleashed their attack on the Union Army on the first day 
of the Battle of Shiloh. Bare Bones is playing across five Aprils, a Civil War Penta game featuring the battles of Bull Run, Pea Ridge, Shiloh, Gettysburg, and Bentonville. This is a game designed by Eric Lee Smith, published by Victory Games. And Kyle Seeley is wrapping up his playthrough of Gaines Mill. This is a game published by The Gamers. It's a Civil War Brigade series and is designed by David Powell. And Steve Dolges unboxes Hearts and Minds Vietnam 1965 to 1975, a game designed by John Paniski, published by Worthington Games. The soft-spoken but formidable foe! Jonathan Townsend is giving us an example of combat in the game Austerlitz, or Austerlitz 1805, Napoleon's Greatest Victory, designed by David A. Fox, published by a GMT. The ASL Scenario Archive gentlemen are doing Illuminating Rounds, number 16, Isolated Locations. I'm assuming they're talking about their isolated locations, not the ASL Scenario. Though, there can be isolated locations in ASL. Obviously there are. You gotta roll a dice for it. Counterproductive Games is showing us a storage solution for command and color system. Also, he reviews sales of glory. Game designed by Andrea Angiolini and Andrea Mainini, published by Ares Games. And Little Wars TV, now let me read you what's in their final season and show here, it's awesome. Ten players engage in a multi-table war game to recreate the event of April 21st, 1918, the last fight of the Red Baron. Are you serious? Check it out, it's awesome, awesome, okay? Check it out. And Jan Heinemann of Let's Play History, oh my god, he's got a shellacking's worth of videos. So he's playing this Resistance game, but German Resistance game. I think it's from 1932 to 1939, that's the, uh, the, time, the time. And uh, it's uh, Through the Darkest of Days. He's got a couple of videos out on that, and also playing Fields of Glory 2, and he has this... Hannibal at Portas. Check it out. Jan Heinemann. Combat Board Games has a couple of videos out. The first one is he's telling us how he's occupying his time, which is quite interesting. That's very nice to go into someone's house and just chat. Also, he's unbagging Circus Minimus, designed by Dean Essig. And he also takes a look at Middle Creek, a skirmish in Eastern Kentucky, designed by Richard Dengel. Harsh Rules, breaking down board games with Ben Harsh. Ben Harsh tackles Paths of Glory, part one. Learn to play with easy rules. Nick does the final turn and wrap of Kernstown, a game published by Revolution Games. Blast Pop examines Mark Herman's latest design, Waterloo 1815, published in C3I issue 33. JK Wargames checks out Scream, Aim, and Fire! World War II Rules, designed by Jamie Kirkpatrick, published by Create Space. Compass Games. Brotherhood and Unity, War in Bosnia, Herzegovina, 1992 to 1995. Always anticipating Harold Buchanan's podcast called Harold on Games, he shellacks us with another five pack. And in these five packs, here are four of them because I think I missed one. Uwe Eichert of Academy Games, Kimber Van Rye, an amateur historian, John Butterfield, who needs no introduction, and Liz Davidson of Beyond Solitaire. Paolo Faina of Italy has a couple of Gianni Zero episodes out. These are podcasts. Episode 81, he talks about Cataphract, and episode 83, he talks about Italy in 1983.
another week, another show. I hope everybody is safe. Wash your hands, don't touch your face. I just washed my hands. I can touch my face. And um, be safe, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, give it six feet. Take it easy. Take it easy. Relax. Everything's going to be fine. So please, support, subscribe, and like this show. And have a good week, good weekend, and I'll see you next week. Be cool. Take it easy. Relax.